Vancouver and Minnesota. I went out on a limb at the beginning of the season, and I said that the Minnesota Wild were better than what people thought. And that is still perhaps true, but perhaps not all that surprising uh, that they were not as good uh, as the Vancouver Canucks. I don't think that's surprising to anybody. I think the issue with Minnesota is that obviously you look and in terms of that front office, they've been in turmoil for the past couple of seasons. You know, you look at the fact that you know they've changed GMs. They fired Bruce Boudreau this season for whatever reason. They sell at the deadline. You know, you end up with Pittsburgh's first round pick, which is pretty nice. You know, it might be this year or next, uh, and we don't know yet. Pittsburgh, you know, if they win the Lafreniere lottery, uh, Minnesota gets their first round pick next year, which could still work out pretty well. But you know, the issue with Minnesota, what would this situation have been? If you had a competent general manager for the past couple of years, if you didn't fire Bruce Boudreau and if you didn't sell. But that's that's a whole different fantasy scenario. All we can do is look at Minnesota for what they are. And for what they are, I don't think anyone expected a crazy amount of success. You know, you bring in Matt Zuccarello and everybody knew, like, okay, that contract could end up being rough. I mean, 37 points in 65 games, just one point in the playoffs. That contract's going to hurt a lot. Miko Koivu's deal is up. Galchenyuk, I don't even know how Galchenyuk did. I mean, obviously, it's been such a weird career for Galchenyuk. No points in four games, seven points in 14 games. I won't be surprised to see Alex Galchenyuk uh, either sign with a low-end team trying to make his name, you know, build his name back up, or he goes over to the KHL. It's going to be one or the other. But you look at this season, the emergence of Kevin Fiala was huge. Uh, Ryan Hartman... Plays with uh, an edge is what I'm going to call it. Uh, Canucks fans are not happy with Ryan Hartman, and rightfully so. You know, you look at this team, no one's really, again, surprised that they, they didn't make it. I still look at this roster and say they could, you know, there could be something here. Whether or not now Bill Guerin is the right guy to salvage what's left and put the right pieces in place, I have no idea. I grew up being a fan of Bill Guerin, and then I saw him almost murder a teammate in practice and who, I don't know what to think of Bill Guerin as a person but as a GM we're going to see what he's able to do and uh, unfortunately I think for Minnesota right now you know the, the main standout here aside from I want to give a shout out to uh, Alex Stalock for trying his damnedest I, I don't know if Devin Dubnik was hurt I know he was on the bench he didn't have a very good regular season but I can't believe with those numbers that Minnesota didn't turn back to Devin Dubnik so what does that say for the future of Devin Dubnik in Minnesota I have no idea but, you know, unfortunately for Minnesota right now, the main thing about, you know, the people are going to remember about them for this postseason, or at least the qualifying round, is Matt Dumba. And, um, you know, again, fair play. All the credit in the world to Matt Dumba. Uh, it is still mind-boggling to me that nobody on his team joined him in any real way, shape, or form. But, you know, at the end of the day, uh, that's kind of what this playoff run is going to be remembered for for them. You go to Vancouver, and, again... For the most part, I mean, three straight wins for the Canucks. Two very close games, including, you know, an 11-second overtime winner in Game 4 by Chris Tanev, of all people, unless that was changed. You know, you look at Vancouver, and you said heading into the season, playoffs are the goal. Probably not looking to go beyond that. I mean, obviously, you don't have your first-round pick or your second, so you're going to be hoping that something happens. But the emergence of JT Miller this year, they end up adding, of course, Tyler Toffoli, and things are looking pretty good for the Canucks. I mean, I still don't have the most faith in the world in this defense. There is something to me that just kind of worries me about, okay, a lot of hard miles on Alex Edler. A solid defenseman, but 34 years old, a lot of hard miles, a lot of playoff battles. You know, Chris Tanev at times has been like the, you know, fish with the glass bones from SpongeBob, even though that was a, you know, a fake. Obviously, though, Quinn Hughes... You know, the emergence of him has been, you know, so crucial to this team. This team's chances, I mean, it live and dies off the back of Markstrom. Which is very interesting because his contract's up at the end of the season. So, very solid numbers where if he can continue that, the Canucks have a pretty decent shot. But there are some question marks on that roster that make me say, is this team in the position to make that push? Are they ready to take that step up? especially with who they have to play in the first round. But crucial for them to at least make it into the actual playoffs. They did that, so I give them props for that.